Hello, my name is Jay, and welcome back to my tech vault. And today we're going to talk about why RAM, and in particular the RAM heat sinks, do nothing, yet show a lot of stuff about the kind of RAM that you're getting. So this is going to be more of something um, to answer the kind of the age-old question, you know, why do you need RAM with heat sinks? Um, why is that a big deal? And basically, a lot of the background behind that. So, if you're unfamiliar, RAM, of course, has multiple options. There's, of course, RAM without the heatsink, without the metal on there. Um, this is some good old RAM that I've had for a couple of years. Um, but usually, the metal kind of serves uh, as decorative options. It's really not something that would describe the performance of the RAM. Uh, like similar to like I don't know a computer, like liquid cooling over air cooling. The differences, of course, is that the com you know the processor itself can perform better uh, when it's given uh, more adequate cooling, it can uh, turbo up higher, it can do a lot of things um, when given more cooling and therefore if it doesn't have uh, adequate cooling it also will turbo down um, and underclock itself to or shut down depending on how it's set up. So similar for that is RAM and RAM also has these like metal heat sinks on them. Now. RAM itself, especially the RAM modulars, do not actually generate enough heat to um, cause that big of a problem. Definitely not enough where RAM heat sinks themselves um, are needed. Now, that being said, though, a lot of people would be like, well, if RAM doesn't have heat sinks, it's a sign of being cheap RAM. And well, what's some problems that you can have from cheap RAM? Well, first off, Overclocking on RAM is difficult, especially because, you know, if you're having it on an AMD platform, obviously this is DDR3, so it wouldn't work, but if you have it on an AMD platform, uh, sort of what I have back here, uh, supported RAM is extremely important, and usually if they don't have enough money to put into heat sinks um, to make it look decent, then of course they won't have enough money to make sure it's supported. So. And that's another reason why that RAM heat sinks are also a important distinguishing factor when you're purchasing RAM. Now, not to say that all RAM that doesn't have heat sinks is bad, but it is something to watch out for because you know a cheap RAM, uh, cheap RAM, even with heat sinks and stuff on it, um, is quite cheap. And of course, these heat sinks themselves are just a little bit of aluminum and some branding on it, and they're not that expensive. So if they're really cutting out that far, the RAM is probably going to reflect that as well. So, uh, the reason why I want to make this video is because people that are going out and they're interested in buying RAM, I've seen a lot of people come out and they're like, hey, is this RAM good? And it doesn't have a heatsink on it. And obviously there's multiple hundreds and hundreds of different types of RAM. Tried an RGB, which this doesn't have any in there. Um, there's stuff that, there's lots of stuff, lots of different RAM heatsinks. Um, and really for me, the only reason that I would say get something, uh, spend money on getting some RAM with uh, a nice heatsink, for example, the Trident RGB, is simply for the RGB effect. Um, other than that, uh, RAM itself, the heatsink, the quality of the heatsink, and how well the heatsink look, looks also is quite determinant of how well the RAM will perform in A, overclocking, or B, um, support in the uh, platform. So, so for people that, you know, as going on to overclocking, the quality of the heatsink, um, in particular the RAM that I have back in my main system, uh, advertises that these heatsinks uh, help it overclock higher. And in reality, RAM itself, when you want to overclock it, the quality of the heatsink really doesn't matter. Um, as I said, you know, processors, of course, cooling matters. Um, unless you're, of course, majorly overclocking it. But in normal terms of just a slight uh, boost in megahertz, it's really not going to be the make or break in your overclocking technique. Obviously, if something ever gets too hot, whether that be for anything like a processor, a RAM, a hard drive, a SSD, a motherboard, anything gets too hot, of course it's going to run into problems, but that will not be basically, in normal running situations, RAM heat sinks are not going to make or break how well you get performance out of your RAM. RAM is pretty much just RAM. Um, so thank you very much for joining me in today's video. I wanted to make this video because it's a question I commonly get, and I like to make some videos that I can send to people and explain an important concept without having to explain it multiple times over. Just send them a video, and it explains it pretty well. Um, but thank you very much for watching. As I said, check out my channel for other cool tech related news, reviews, builds, etc. I'm working on a uh, the 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 world's smallest CPU cooler was a hit, so now we're on to the world's smallest GPU cooler, and that's the next uh, video that we're on. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day, and goodbye.